Welcome to the lecture series on convolutional neural networks. This video covers how we can reduce the number of parameters by separating space and depth. So the standard procedure, as explained in the earlier video, is that we have different color channels in the image, channel 0, 1, and 2. And for each channel, we use a different filter. So this is the filter for channel 0. This is the filter for channel 1. This is the filter for channel 2. So if each filter is 3.3 in the spatial dimension, then we have a total filter tensor 3x, 3x, 3. And we have several filters, and the filter index is k. But actually, why should the spatial filter be different in each channel? If you think about this, so this indicates here that I have sort of a diagonal stripe detector, an edge detector for diagonal patterns. If this is useful in one color channel, maybe this is also useful in the second color channel and maybe also in the third color channel. That's an interesting observation because this will allow us to reduce the number of parameters. And we can go further and still keep a bit of flexibility because we could use the same spatial layout, the spa same spatial features, yet with a different scaling. So, this is scaling of 1, this is scaling of 2, and this is scaling of minus 1. So now we have a representation of the three color channels, the three filters for the three channels, that are a combination of a spatial layout that's always fixed, but that's scaled differently. So the situation would now look like this. In the spatial dimension x and y, I always have this diagonal stripe pattern. And here is the depth dimension, which has the index c. And so the idea is that the total filter entry, x, y position, depth position or channel or color, and k is the filter index. This can be written by two components that are specific for this filter k. One is the depth index c, and the other one is the, has the two spatial indices x and y. So let's use this. Let's use this in the formula that we have here. So I plug this expression in here, I write it in the following order. I start with the color component of this channel K, and then I multiply with a XY component of this same channel K. Okay, so this is according to our assumption, we can always separate it out in this outer product form. And now we have to do the summations. Let me just write this again. It's over all x, it's over all y, and then here it's over my color channels. Suppose I have three of these, i plus x minus one, j plus y minus one, comma c, and then I plug in this term here. And now you see that I can take the sum at each x, y position. I can take the sum with this color position, evaluate this w, c, k, evaluate this, and multiply afterwards with the spatial component w, 
x, y for this filter k. So let's interpret this. I started off with the three color channels and they are scaled versions of the same spatial layout with a scaling of one and two and minus one. Now, what I just showed is that you can, that this amounts to taking the image and summing the different color entries with a corresponding weighting factor that's given by the filter. Now, if this weighting factor were the same for everybody, one and one and one, then it would just be the gray value of the image. You get away with the color. You throw out the color. So since we have this weighting of different channels, we have sort of a slightly reddish gray or a slightly greenish gray. But essentially, it's a very efficient representation of, of this three times three times three channel. And of course, this not only works for color. We can think of an arbitrary channel with depth 100. So this is the, the volume that needs to be picked up by a filter. I use a 5.5 filter in the spatial dimensions and we have depth 100. So the total filter volume for one filter is five times five times 100. So let's count the parameters. Five times five makes 25 times 100. That makes 2,500. So this is our reference. Now let's compare with the representation where we separated out in a spatial component. The spatial component has a structure of five times five, which is always the same, 25. And then I have a depth component and in a depth direction, sort of one filter will have a scaling of one, the other of two, the third one of 0.5, the fourth one of minus two. So in total, I have 100 parameters for the depth component. So I have 125 parameters to describe all the entries in this volume. Whereas with the naive approach, I have 2,500 parameters. In summary, this is a this outer product representation is a very efficient compression of the number of parameters. And of course, this brings in a bias. This says that across all these different, across all these 100 depth channels, it's useful to work with the same filter. 